welcome back to another video. Today I have a very in-depth video for you all that I've been planning for a few weeks now. So as we all know, 2020 is finally coming to an end. A lot of people ask me questions all year round about how I run my online art shop or how they can start selling their own art online. So I thought I'd do an entire video giving you guys my top tips on how to start selling your art online. So if one of your resolutions for 2021 is to actually start selling your art online, make sure to keep watching. So before we actually get into how you should sell your art online um, as a business, I wanted to mention commissions and how to start off small firstly. So I feel like with most artists, uh, everyone always starts off small with commissions from their friends and their family because that's the first sort of clients you get uh, as a, a young artist, which is lovely. It's a great place to start because it's a nice, comfortable way to start learning how to price your artwork, how to start budgeting your time uh, and putting a price on your time as well. Um, some things to consider are always what art materials you're using, uh, how long it's taking you to make the commissioned artwork, the cost of those materials. There's a lot of things that go into how you price a commission. Also, don't forget to keep in mind that if you are shipping out a physical product to include packaging and posting in the price of the commission. It's also smart to start getting used to asking for 50% of the payment up front. And I know this is obviously not mandatory in any way, but it is a nice thing to put into practice because um, I cannot tell you how many times I have uh, made a commission for a client and sent them the commission for review and then never heard back from them or their bank account. So it also holds them more accountable because you already know that they've paid you half of the money. Um, speaking of accountability, if you do start selling your artwork uh, with commissions to people outside of your, you know, your bubble, your, your social circle, it would be nice to start thinking about invoicing because again, that's another sort of contractual accountability that your client and you can, you know, um, agree upon in terms of pricing and time and hopefully it will make sure that you get paid for your artwork. So now getting into mass producing and selling multiples of your artwork, we obviously have to discuss manufacturing and production. So as a beginner of selling your art, I would definitely recommend using third-party printing companies. Why do I recommend this? It's because in the end it's going to be cheaper, it's going to be easier and it's going to require a lot less knowledge on your behalf to use uh, a company who who is very well versed in this area <laughs> and who know what they're doing. I still to this day use third party printing companies, not only because I really enjoy supporting local businesses in the UK, but because I really don't have the space in my <laughs> current living situation to have all the printing equipment I would need to print off and produce all the products that I uh, provide on my shop. Like just for manufacturing stickers and prints, you need all these bougie printers and crickets and sticker cutting um, equipment that I just don't have the space for <laughs> in my tiny little room. Uh, hopefully one day, if I do have a studio, I would love to invest in my own production equipment and actually produce my own products. So to begin finding uh, your perfect printing company, I definitely recommend doing a lot of research. Look into local businesses, national businesses that uh, work near you. The closer to you the company is, the better, not only because you're supporting a local business, but because shipping and delivery times will be a lot smaller. So I obviously, living in the UK, I avoid using American, you know, uh, production companies and Chinese production companies because it would be a lot more expensive, not only for the shipping, but a lot, lot, lot more time to wait for the stuff to get to me. So I actually made a list of some of the companies that I actually recommend in the UK. So I really recommend Mixum, Zap, Awesome Merch, Made by Cooper for enamel pins, and Vista Print is also an excellent choice for business cards specifically. They have really cheap prices of business cards and they're like the best uh, company if you're starting out a business. You don't have the biggest budget for business cards especially. Eventually, if you want to get some more bougie business cards, I personally now use the foil printing company because they do a lot of um, holographic foil printing and I 
am on that holographic high right now. So yeah, obviously the links to everything I mentioned will be down in the description if you would like to check out these companies in the UK. But don't just take my word for it. It is very important that you do your own research when looking for printing companies because the products that I order from these specific companies uh, might be different from the products that you order and the quality between those products might be very different just because it's a very good company at printing off this specific product doesn't mean they're going to be excellent at printing off this other specific product that you might want to get uh, produced. Doing this means probably getting sample packs from them. A lot of companies do that. Getting some um, sample prints of whatever it is you're wanting to order. A lot of companies do that as well. Maybe looking at reviews from other people. Another great thing is that a lot of these companies actually provide you with templates on their website for you to use when submitting your artwork. And it is also very, very, very important for you to very carefully read all the artwork submission checklists and the rules for their website because every company uses different printing machines, different systems, completely different processes. So it's very important for you to read through what they need from you so that they can give you the the correct printing product that you require because it's very annoying when you miss one little detail and then you get a batch of prints that you don't want to sell because they're just not the way you wanted them to be and you've already paid for them so in the long run double triple checking things will actually save you a lot of money time and headaches <laughs> and finally looking through different companies and doing your own research will also allow you to compare prices different companies will provide different prices for different qualities for different amounts of manufacturing. Maybe pick a company to start off with that actually suits your budget um, and then maybe start expanding to different companies that provide higher quality as well as a higher price. Try to work with your budget basically and do your research accordingly. Assuming that you have uh, picked a printing company and have printed off some of your products, it is now time to photograph them. And actually you don't need much for this. Some pro tips for me is to actually buy two or three pieces of A3 colored cardboard of any colors of your choice, colors that maybe suit your branding. But yeah, colored card is super cheap. You can buy it at any craft store or any art store and they're pretty cheap uh, per sheet. If you wanna go a little bit more bougie with your photographs, you can buy some little decorations. I have um, a selection of different fake flowers and some fake leaves, uh, maybe some little confettis, maybe even using things that you already have, such as like washi tapes and different art materials. Just basically things that you can decorate your, your artwork with in your photograph without distracting too much from the actual product that you're photographing. This will basically make the picture look a little bit more interesting and therefore catch people's eyes a lot more. So the thing with the colored cardboard is that you can photograph flat things and also create a little mini studio at your house. You don't need a photography studio to, to photograph uh, your own product. You wanna take your cardboard and prop it against a wall at a 90 degree angle so that it creates a nice, beautiful, soft curve. And you've basically now created a mini photography studio. And you can, again, decorate your set with little decor again if you want and go ahead and photograph your, your products it's super easy but we also need to discuss lighting of course if you don't own a softbox or a ring light or any sort of lighting equipment uh, I would really recommend trying to use natural light from a window so the more dispersed light you use the better because there will be less light reflections caught on your product less harsh shadows and what you really want is a nice dispersed whoosh, lighting as opposed to like a intense focus from say a desk lamp. As long as you've got good lighting you can actually photograph on anything and it will probably be good enough quality to put on your shop. You don't need a super high-end photography camera for your products. As long as you've got a uh, good enough lighting you can really work with anything. So now let's talk about pricing. So when thinking about what to price your products and your art at there's various different things to consider. There is cost of manufacturing, there is time that you spend working on said product, and there is your value as an artist. And all three of those are very important. When I was starting out, not only doing commissions, but starting out selling my art online, I really did not value myself as an artist at all. I used to completely underprice my products and I just really hated charging people money for my products in general. I just thought that I didn't have enough value as an artist as I should. So don't do, don't 
don't be me, don't be Pipa back in the day. Really try to value yourself as an artist and people who will want to buy your product are wanting to buy your value as an artist. They want something made by you. So never undersell your items just because you are new or just because you're just starting out. If they like your artwork, they're gonna buy the artwork. Also take all of the time that you've taken practicing your craft into consideration. People often forget that artists aren't just like whacking out art like that um, the first try. It takes years and years and years of practice to get to the point of art that you're providing in that artwork so you have to consider that as well because people often forget that like tiny little detail that an artist's work also entails the years and years of practice that it's taken them to get to that point so once you've got all the details of your products down it's time to actually set up your online shop there are hundreds and hundreds of options out there for shop fronts and ways for you to sell your art online if you would like to start off small without paying uh, many fees uh, or any fees at all you can start selling on social media there is fake Facebook Marketplace, there is Instagram. I'm sure there's other ones that I'm personally not aware of, but there are probably a lot of different um, social media where you can easily sell your artwork through private messaging and stuff like that. But if you are wanting to sell a higher number of products or more than one product at a time, I would really recommend getting some sort of shop front. It'll just be easier for you to have some sort of system in place that collects all the orders people are making and it's just a lot easier than doing it through private messaging, if it makes any sense. So in terms of websites and shopfront hosts, there are numerous ones that you can pick from as well. If you would like to get something a little bit more professional or someplace where you can also host your website and your portfolio, I would recommend Squarespace for uh, starting your business. Maybe you've got a bigger budget maybe to start off with. It might even be that if you don't have the budget for it at the moment that you start off somewhere a little bit cheaper such as Etsy, Wix, and then once your business starts growing, you actually transfer to a, a more professional, more platform such as Squarespace or Xyro. Tons of people do it it's really not that big of a deal. So just uh, pick something that fits your budget at the time. So now that you have your online shop slash website all set up and ready, it's time to start marketing yourself because, and I say this all the time, people don't guess. People don't know that you're out there until you tell them that you're out there. So you need to share your online shop and what you're selling on various different social media platforms. And once you share about your shop and let people know that you're out there, selling your things don't just stop there you have to keep reminding them because maybe a lot of people won't see that first or second post about it you have to keep reminding them that you're there when more people start arriving sometimes the algorithm is weird and it doesn't show people what you're actually putting out there so make sure to keep reminding uh, your audience. It is not annoying to keep reminding people that you are selling your artwork online. Some people will probably even be very thankful that you've reminded them because they forgot that they were gonna buy this thing from you and they're like, oh yeah, thanks for the reminder. I'm gonna buy your product now. The hustle is the hustle and people will probably respect you more than feel annoyed by you. Also, the more you share about your online shop and your artwork, the more you will attract your specific audience. Your artwork will probably not be everyone's cup of tea. That's just how the world works. But there will be people out there that will really enjoy your products. So make sure to keep sharing about your business and then people who enjoy it will share about your business too. And then more and more people who actually really enjoy your artwork and want to buy your products will show up. And then you've got your little community of people who enjoy your artwork. Getting your first order on your online shop is one of the most magical feelings on the planet, but it can very quickly turn from being excited to intimidated when you realize you actually have to package up this good and ship it off to its new owner. But don't worry, because once you get the hang of things, it actually is very easy. So in terms of packaging brands and and packaging materials. Here are some companies that I really recommend. So EcoCrafts do biodegradable and sustainable packaging. They're also very ethically produced. Uh, they're all made out of recycled materials. So they do things such as biodegradable cellophane bags, recycled material envelopes, recycled cardboard for backing cards, boxes. They do all kinds of packaging. Another brand that I really recommend is No Issue, which are a brand that I just recently found out about that I have become a huge fan of. So they're not just a pack packaging company. They're also like a printing company for your packaging. They're also very ecological, very sustainable and ethically produced. I actually recently got these two stamps uh, printed with no issue. Um, they're one of those self-inking stamps that have the inking pad on the inside and then you just 
So I got these two for my shop orders. I got this one that says, thank you. It's got my two little ghosties. And then this one that just has my ghost logo and my shop name on it that I like to stamp on orders and books and stuff like that. These are very handy and a very good price point. Hey guys, Editing Piper here. I just completely forgot to mention this, but uh, before I actually started buying my uh, stamps with no issue, I actually used to make my own uh, and they are uh, a lot cheaper, obviously. Um, what you can do is just buy some lino some uh, printing lino and actually carve out your designs in lino and stick them onto these very cheap stamp holders all in all I think it'll cost you about like five pounds um, in total to make your own stamp so if you are uh, very low budget at the moment this is definitely something that I recommend so I just thought I'd mention that Similarly, No Issue also do stickers for you to package your orders with. They do thank you cards. I recently got these beautiful thank you cards made with them. They're very nice and satiny finished. And uh, yeah. On top of that, I got something that I have been wanting to get made for a while now for my shop, which is tissue paper for wrapping my orders. This wonderful tissue paper printed out with No Issue. As you can see, it's got my little ghosties on it as well. I'm really excited to start packaging my orders with my own branded tissue paper in uh, 2021. So if you order anything from me in January, you'll probably see these bad boys on your order. And speaking of thank you cards, it's also worth thinking about it, what extra goodies you're gonna wanna put in your orders. It's always nice to put in a business card, maybe a little freebie, like a little sticker or something. In my orders, I always love putting in a uh, business card, a free little sticker and a thank you card uh, with a design done by me on the front and then some somewhere I can write the person's name on the back with my own handwriting because I just think it makes every order a little bit more personal and it makes people just feel a little, a little happier when their order arrives. Basically try to make your customers feel as warm as possible so that they will probably want to come back and order from you again. Just try to make people's experience buying on your shop as magical as possible. So finally, make sure your packages are nicely secured and protected when you put them in their envelopes. Now, um, depending on what product you are shipping out, it is important to think about the logistics of packing this uh, said object. You might want to invest in some bubble wrap or some padded envelopes, maybe some envelopes with a hardback surface if you're selling prints. I always like, even with hardback envelopes, Envelopes, I always like putting in some extra cardboard uh, to support my prints even more just to really make sure that they don't bend or get like damaged in any way. So now talking about shipping. Uh, it is also important ahead of time before you launch your shop that you have all the shipping options uh, ready to go and set up. Depending on where you are based and where you live, there will obviously be different services and different shipping prices to different parts of the world. So if you don't really know much about your country's shipping prices or anything, have a look online on their website. If they don't have an online website with a lot of information, definitely go into uh, one of the post office branches and ask people about the different services that they provide, the prices for different services, prices for those services for different areas of the world. It might be that you only provide track shipping for your parcels if it's very expensive uh, items that you're producing. Uh, it might be that you offer both standard and track. Also consider that there will be different prices for different sizes, weights, and different kinds of products as well. So make sure you do your research about the laws and regulations of your country as well. If you're sending something out that might need its own set of packaging rules. Make sure you have your information, do your research. Yeah, it really does depend on what you're planning on shipping. But once you have all those things figured out and on your shop, you're pretty much set and ready to go. I just wanted to mention a little bit at the end, a little bit about branding and expanding. Once your shop starts growing, it might be that you want to start investing in other uh, little bits and bobs for your shop. It might be that you create some sort of uh, unique branding for your shop, something that people will identify as your business. It might be that you create loyalty cards or discount cards or even creating a newsletter for your website, maybe even doing some sales, bundle offers. There's so many things that you can do on your shop to uh, keep bringing people back. So overall, my last final words to you is to not rush things, take it slow and do your research. In the end, you will probably make some mistakes. That is completely natural. You're only human. I personally have made tons of mistakes. 
<laughs> um, in the past few years on my online shop. It's just natural. I'm the only one working on my online shop. I do everything myself. So it's natural that I will slip up once in a while. You will make mistakes, but just don't stress out too much about them because more times than not, people will be very understanding that you are a sole trader, that you are working on this on your own and they will be completely happy and patient with you while you sort out whatever mistake it is. So you will learn from your mistakes and you will probably set up some sort of system that will avoid those mistakes being made again. So finally, I'd like to wish everyone really good luck if you are thinking of starting to sell your artwork online in the new year in 2021. By the time that this video comes out, I think my shop is about to close in two or three days for the Christmas period. So if you do still want to get something before my shop closes, you should probably go right now because it's going to close very soon. But my shop will reopen in January in 2021 with a truckload of new things that I am so excited to show you. You have no idea. I wanted to say a really, really huge thank you to everyone who supported me in 2020 on my online shop and elsewhere. I'm so, so grateful for everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you to you guys for watching this video. I really hope it was helpful. And yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.